Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to switch your system over to the ISO date format. That is a universally accepted global date format that will help you avoid confusion talking to people in other countries. Instead of going day, month, year, or month, day, year, you go year, month, day. This way, everyone's on the same level. Now, I recorded this video for Windows Learning Zone because... This is actually a setting that you change in Windows. However, I know most of you are Excel and Access users, so I'm also going to show you how it affects Excel and Access. So, here we go. Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by WindowsLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to switch your computer over to the ISO standard date format. This is a universal date format that's used all around the world, and you can use it to avoid confusion and prevent international incidents. If you communicate with people in other countries, whether for business or pleasure, you need a date standard that's the same for everyone. When you have dates displayed like 4 slash 2 slash 2022, that could mean April 2nd or February 4th, depending on where you're located. This can be embarrassing on a personal level, like my flight will be landing at noon on 2322, if you said that to someone in a text or an email, or it can be costly on a business level, right? To avoid late fee, your invoice is due on 4522. Is it April 5th or May 4th? Personally, with my computer classes, I have students in almost every country of the world. When people ask me questions, usually in their Excel sheets or their Microsoft Access databases, it can be very confusing for both of us. I get their information, I look at it, I'm like, is this day, month, year, or year, month, day, or whatever. So it's, it's important to have a standard date format. So the ISO 8601 standard date format is unambiguous. Regardless of where you are, the date 2022-10-03 is always October 3rd, 2022. You've probably heard of the ISO before. It's the International Organization for Standardization. Founded in Geneva, Switzerland in 1947. They're responsible for everything from business practices and food safety to healthcare, technology, and of course, daytime formats. 8601 is the name for a specific set of standards for dates and times. It was first published in 1988. Yeah, and we should have been using it all this time. They recently re uh, revised it as of 2019, and it's a method for providing a clear standard for international dates and times. Now, it's the most logical way to format a date, okay? Date and time values are ordered from the largest to the smallest unit. So it goes year, month, day, hour, minute, second. Each date value has a fixed number of digits padded with a leading zero. So you'll never see like 2022-1-2. It's always 01-02. Dates may also be written without separators. This was more common in older computers when you were using text files to store dates, for example, you could just write it like that without any slashes or hyphens. In addition to being a logical and unambiguous date format, ISO dates are naturally sortable strings. So you don't have to have any special logic or functions or whatever to sort files that might have these as backup file names, for example. Okay, you can see how easily they're just, they're just sorted. If you go month, day, year, or even day, month, year, you, you can't naturally sort that. So, how do you set the ISO date format? Well, it's in Windows. It's in your Windows settings under the regional settings. In Windows 10, and I'm pretty sure in 7 and 8, you go to regional settings, change data formats, and then go to ISO short date. Yes, I haven't upgraded to Windows 11 yet. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But just go to your start button. Type in region, R-E-G-I-O-N. There's region settings. Click on that. Come down here to change data formats. And you'll see right here, short date. I dropped this down before and I picked this one right there. That's the ISO standard. All right, year, month, day. For me, I'm in the US, right? It goes like this. I want that one, okay? I'm gonna leave the long date setting as it is. It's pretty much unambiguous as it already is. So this guy here, the long date, I'm going to leave that one. That's pretty much just something that I use for like displaying in like a, a Word document if you put the date and you want it to look pretty or on top of a report. The ISO standard also includes times. If you want to change your time format, it's hour, minute, seconds. 
and then fractions of a second if you want it. Now, I used N to represent minutes because in Microsoft Access, N is for minute in the format, and M is for month, okay? And yes, this is a 24-hour clock. There's no AM and PM in the ISO standard. So if you're familiar with military time, 2300 hours, for example, is 11 o'clock p.m. And this is probably the one reason why I won't yet switch to 24-hour time, the ISO standard, because so many people are still used to a 12-hour clock. So I just that's, just, that's going too far. But let me show you a little bit more about the time standard. If you want to add a time zone, you can, right? You can go plus or minus however many hours before or after Greenwich Mean Time you are. Right, so for example, minus five right there would be New York in standard time. If you're using universal coordinated time, UTC time, that's the format. You just simply put a Z at the end. That indicates that it's UTC. If you don't know what UTC is, I've got a video about it. You can go watch it right there. You'll find a link down below in the link section. And of course, you could put them together. You could do a date value with a time value because as you know, if you use Microsoft Excel or Access, uh, each data point can be a day and time together in the same field. Now there's different standards, right? Here's a date with a space and then a time, or you might see it with a T there. Sometimes they separate it with a T. So this is the date portion. This is the time portion. Okay. This one adds a time zone. Actually it's Greenwich mean time. That means there's zero hours plus or minus, right? This one indicates it's UTC. And here you might see it without any punctuation marks. This is perfectly valid. Okay, you can do year, month, day. Notice they're all two digits, right? Then a T, then hours, then it's seconds, universal. All right. Now, don't worry if this all seems confusing. I'm just going over what the standard is. You don't have to worry about getting this complex with it yet. Now, while I'm strongly in favor of a 24-hour UTC clock, I know a lot of people prefer the standard 12-hour AM, PM system. I'm not ready to make that change yet either. So, baby steps. Although I think the... The world commerce, communication, and everything, as, as the world gets smaller, you know, as we're all communicating over the internet and we're doing business in different countries, I think a 24-hour universal clock would be perfect. So it's 3 o'clock on Tuesday everywhere. That's just me. <laughs> and don't even get me started on daylight savings time. I absolutely hate daylight savings time. I cannot stand it. Changing clocks twice a year is dumb. Especially where I live in Florida, we've already voted, the state voted, to get rid of daylight saving time. But we're still waiting on Congress. And since it involves interstate trade, we have to wait for Congress. So sometimes, probably sometime in the next decade, we might be able to get rid of it. <laughs> Again, if you want to learn more about either of these concepts, universal time or daylight savings time, there's the link right there. Now, I'm going to leave time pretty much as it is, but I am going to switch from the single digit hour to the double digit hour. That's more in line with the ISO standard. Okay. So I'm going to change my short time. The default short time is this guy. I'm going to change it to this one. Same with long time. I like that double digit hour. Why am I doing that? Well, you'll see exactly why when I talk about how this affects Microsoft Access in a few minutes. So hang in there. I'll explain why. Now, today's video is only scratching the surface with dates and times. If you want to learn more about the ISO standard, as it, it applies to days of the year, there's formatting for weeks of the year, like 1 through 52, uh, durations, time intervals, all kinds of stuff. I'll put links to some valuable resources. There's the link on my webpage you can go to, or I'll put some links down below in the description. Okay, now how does this stuff affect Excel and Access? Well, when you make this change, the dates that you already have in your spreadsheet that are formatted as just standard dates or short dates will be switched to the ISO dates, okay? But any custom date formats you have in place will not be changed. So there you can see over here, this was just a standard date and they all switched automatically, okay? But this one, I had a custom date format in the cell and it kept it the way that it was, all right? So it won't change any custom formatted cells that you have. Now, you do have to be careful entering in new values, okay? If you just type in 1 slash 2, you're going to get January 2nd, just like this, all right? Just like you're expecting it to from the old standard. But if you type in 1 slash 2 slash 22, you're going to get this, 1, 2, 22. See that? 
All right, so it's going to take this and make it year, month, day. Even though you're expecting the old format, it's going to convert it to that. So be careful. Okay, you can still type it in this format if you want to, if you want to use the default year. Okay. Now, how does this affect Microsoft Access? Likewise, any existing short date fields, which is the default date format in Microsoft Access, will be changed to the new ISO date. So unless you have any custom date formats, you'll be fine. So my short dates got changed to that. My long dates look like that, which is fine. And this one I had a custom date in, which kept the old format, which was uh, month, day, year. Okay, so these are not going to change. These will change automatically. Now, typing in new date values in Access is going to be a little bit different from Excel. The field on the form will always keep the same format, unlike Excel, where the format can change based on what you type. So remember in Excel, when you type in 1, 2, you still get January 2nd. In Access, if you type in 1, 2, it's going to give you this format, though. All right, so the value is still the same. But what's displayed is still going to be the short date that Access has. Access is a lot more structured and rigid, whereas Excel lets you change things a lot more easily. So it's going to kind of try to adapt the format to whatever you type in, to what it thinks you want. Okay? I kind of, I don't like that about Excel. I like Access where you can define what the field is supposed to look like ahead of time. I mean, you can do that with Access and, and Excel, but Access is more rigid. Okay? And if you type in 1, 2, 22, same problem. You're going to get 1, 2, 22 in that format. Okay, so here's what you type in. Here's what you get. Minus the quotes, of course. So dates are still stored internally as that same number. Okay, so you don't have to worry about, you know, the, the values in your data, in your tables, being wrong. Any functions that work with dates, like date add, date part, year, month, format, all that stuff, should all work just the same. The only time you might have a problem is if you're importing data from spreadsheets or text files that are formatted differently. So be sure to check that anytime you run an import. Also, if you have code where you manually assemble dates based on string concatenation, right? You got to watch that too. So be careful. I know I used to do a lot of that in the old days before I knew all the date functions, right? I would take like the left, you know, two characters of a string and make that the, the month and so on. So you got to be careful. Now, here's the thing with that short time setting that I mentioned earlier, why I'm switching to the two-digit hour. If you don't change the window's short time setting that I mentioned earlier to show two-digit hours, then even if you use the HH colon NN format to display times, Access will still use the window's single-digit short time format. I actually did a video about this years ago. It's on my YouTube channel, on my website. But, but basically... Even if you use HHNN, even if you specify that as the format, right, Access will still convert that over to short time and use one character, one digit for the hour. Doesn't care. All right. I personally, I think that's a bug, but it'll convert this over to short time. So you have to make the changes at the Windows level. So instead of this, you get this. That's why I like to do that. Okay. I, li I like the two digit hours. I want all my times to line up like the same, okay? The only time I would change this is if I'm trying to make it pretty. And also remember, if you make these changes, you may have to close your, you may have to, you will have to close your database and reopen it. So if you have a, an access database open and you make changes in the control panel and you change your regional settings, you're going to have to close access and restart it for those changes to take effect. A couple of times while I was preparing these slides, I didn't do that. And I'm like, ah. Mm. Forgot to close the database. I'm like, why didn't it change? Now, the advantages of using the new ISO date, I mean, if you do any kind of international communication, I've already gone over the advantages, right? It's unambiguous. Everyone is on the same page. Everybody knows what's going on, All right? If someone's in England, someone else is in China, someone else is in the U.S., you all are on the same page as far as the dates go, okay? The only major disadvantage I can think of or adopting the new format is getting used to inputting new dates. All right, it's gonna take you some time to get used to it, me included. All right, I'm just doing this today. I'm, I'm switching over all my databases and, and my computers to the standard today. I finally decided to just pull the bandaid off and just do it, okay? Old dates will generally adopt to the new standard automatically, okay? Typing in new values is gonna take some getting used to. Now, if you're still just typing in, you know, uh, 
common dates like like month day, sure, you can just still type in four slash five. But if you're doing stuff with years, you got to remember to lead with the year. Okay, you got to type in you know twenty two slash four slash five at least. That will work. Practice, get used to it. Now, if you want some enforcement and some help in getting used to typing in the new date format, set up an input mask in your fields. This way, your users have to input the data that way. They have to type in exactly, right, 2022 or whatever, okay? I have a whole separate video on input masks. There's the link right there. You'll find it down below in the link section. Now, there's more to come. Like I said, I'm just making this change myself today. I finally decided over the last couple of days I'm going to do it. I'm going to have all my new classes and videos that come out are going to be in this date format. Just because everyone around the world, I, I got people from pretty much every country on the planet that buy my lessons. So I want everyone to be on the same page. Okay? So I'm sure I'll have more tips and tricks and pointers coming up. And I'll put links on this page if I do any follow-up videos for this. So keep checking. Keep watching my YouTube channel. You'll, you'll see something on there. And, of course, I have to mention the guys over at xkcd.com. Very funny cartoon series. Here's your public service announcement. The following formats are therefore discouraged. <laughs> so there you go. There's your fast tip for today on setting your computer to the ISO date format. I hope you learned something. Again, my name is Richard Ross from windowslearningzone.com, and we'll see you again real soon.